Our last topic in this chapter is the pseudo inverse of a matrix. So we're going to start with the connection between the gram matrix uh, and the matrix itself. So it's this. If you have a matrix A, it has linearly independent columns. If and only if its gram matrix is invertible. Okay, so um, what does it mean to say it has linearly independent columns? It basically says that if AX equals zero, that implies that X equals zero, right? Because this simply says that there's a linear combination of the coefficients, oh, sorry, there's a linear combination of the columns of A with coefficients given by XI um, is zero. And linear independence says the only way to do that is when all the coefficients are zero, and that's what this is. So this is what we're, this is what, this is what it means uh, for the columns of A to be linearly independent. Okay, now to show this, what we're gonna show is that AX is zero, uh, if and only if a transpose x a a transpose a x is zero. Now these are different sizes, right? If a is m by n, that is an m uh, that's that that has size m. This has size n uh, in this case because that's an n times n uh, system uh, matrix, and then that's a this is a and and then the zero on the right hand side is also size n. Okay, so let's do this. Um, so first of all, suppose AX equals zero. And if you like, that means that there's a linear combination of the columns of A, which is zero. Um, then we're going we're gonna to show that basically the same, if I multiply by A transpose AX, I get zero. So let's see. So A transpose AX, I'm going to reassociate that as A transpose times AX. Ah, but AX is zero. So this is A transpose zero, and that's zero. Okay. And so what this tells you is if the it, that says that if AX equals zero, then A transpose A X equals zero. Okay. Now, conversely, suppose A transpose A <clears throat> X equals zero. Um, then what we're going to write is I'm going to take this thing, uh, which is an N vector, and I'm going to multiply on the left by X, X transpose, and I'm going to get zero is, well, X transpose times zero is zero. So um, I get zero. Uh, but I'm going to reassociate this quadruple product in the following way. I'm going to rewrite that as, first I'm going to write it as x transpose a transpose a x, and then I'm going to re, uh, I'm going to reassociate it this way, and then x transpose a transpose I will recognize as a x quantity transpose. Okay? Ah, but wait a minute. This is the transpose of a vector in a product with itself, or sorry, the times itself, right? And that's the norm squared. So this says that zero is the norm squared of AX. Well, the only way you can have a norm or norm squared be zero is if the, the argument itself is zero. So that says AX equals zero. And so what this does is it tells us, uh, it establishes that A has linearly independent columns if and only if A transpose A is, is invertible. Okay, so, so that's a connection between uh, a matrix and, the, and, the gram, and its associated gram matrix. Okay. And now we can say, we can tell you what the pseudo inverse of a tall matrix is. Um, I should say that this is pretty standard uh, mathematical notation, like everybody knows what a, pseudo, what a pseudo inverse is. There's some other names for it. It's also called, I think, the Moore-Penrose inverse. Uh, that's especially if you, if you come from the UK. Uh, they were British mathematicians. Um, and it's probably got some other names as well. Um, oh, and its notation is this. It's a superscript with a dagger. And, and so, in fact, in, in informal speech, you might say a dagger. So that's what it is. Okay. And here's what it is. And, you know, these things get very complicated to parse, but you really got to be on your toes to make sure everything's cool. It's A transpose A quantity inverse A transpose. Okay. So um, let's, quick, let's do a quick syntax check. Let's make A is M by N. And let's just, let's just check that the dimensions make sense. Okay. So... A transpose is an N by M matrix. Now, let's see. Let's look at A transpose A. That's the gram matrix, by the way. So A transpose A. A is M by N. A transpose is N by M. And so the result, A transpose A, is N by N. That's the gram matrix. It's N by N. And so this is... Now, the inverse of an N by N matrix is an N by N matrix. So this is N by N. And sure enough... We're cool because we're multiplying two matrices and the, uh, the, the dimension in the middle is equal. Okay, so it's in. So the whole thing, a dagger is an N by M 
matrix. So a dagger kind of looks like the transpose, uh, right? Because it's it it has the it has the transpose dimensions. Um, okay, and it's equal to this. Now, so far I, that means nothing to you, and in fact, it's not even going to make it mean a whole lot to you now. Um, actually, in the next section of the course, it's going to make a it's, it's actually going to mean a lot to you. We'll get to that. Okay. Now, first thing to note about a dagger or a pseudo inverse um, is that it is a left inverse of a. Uh, so let's just check. Um, a, that means if I multiply it on the left, um, if I multiply a on the left by a dagger, so if I do that, I just plug this stuff in and I reassociate this as a transpose a inverse times a transpose a, but a matrix, any matrix times its inverse on the left is the identity. So look at that. So we now have a left inverse. By the way, we have now shown something that uh, I mentioned a few lectures ago, but did not uh, actually uh, derive. Uh, and that is that if a matrix has independent columns, then it has a pseudo inverse. And now we can be very explicit. It's like here's, by the way, it, can have, it will have multiple pseudo inverses if it's tall. But the point is it has at least a pseudo inverse. And in fact, here's a, Simple formula for it. It's a transpose a inverse a transpose. Um, so so that's that's now established. That was something left open from a couple of lectures ago. Um, now there's some. Uh, by the way, it, it's very easy to get into trouble with these kinds of equations, right? Like 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 that. Um, it's just too easy to just look at it, not be present or not be thinking about what it means, and all of a sudden you're in big big trouble. Um, and to, to do that, I'm, I'm going to work out, we're going to see what the pseudo inverse is when a is square. So if a is square, then a dagger is equal to a transpose a, in parentheses, uh, quantity inverse times a transpose. Now, because a is square, I'm gonna, I can actually say that a transpose a is the product of two square matrices inverse. That's the, in, that's the product of the inverses in reverse order. So this is... A inverse times A transpose inverse, that's slang for A transpose inverse, is A minus T or something uh, like that, and then multiplied by A transpose. Um, now, this is the identity, and it goes away, so you get A inverse. So we can think of the pseudo inverse uh, as, a, as a generalization of an inverse uh, to the case when a matrix A is tall, let's say. Oh, and I should say as inde linearly independent columns, then that's that's what the pseudo inverse is. And indeed, it's a left inverse of that. So, okay, so that that is, the, uh, later we're gonna find out it's actually much more special than just merely a left inverse. It's got some very special properties, but for now, we'll just uh, leave it this way. That's what the pseudo inverse is. Um, I should also say that, you know, all languages for manipulating uh, matrices, all packages and languages will indeed have some function that carries out the pseudo inverse. Okay, now we also have the pseudo inverse of a wide matrix. So if A is wide, then um, A, A transpose, that is by the way, the gram matrix of A transpose. Um, that's invertible. And the pseudo inverse is then defined this way. It's A transpose times A, A transpose quantity inverse. Now, again, you have to be so uh, careful with these things because you can write down stuff like this and it's either meaningless or wrong. That's extremely easy. You have to be very careful. So this requires A to be wide with linearly independent rows. Otherwise, this makes absolutely no sense. It's just like parts of it are just wrong, like things are not invertible, all that kind of stuff. Okay, now not surprisingly, A dagger, the, the pseudo inverse of a wide matrix with linearly independent rows is a right inverse. The same way A dagger was a left inverse, when A is tall with linearly independent columns. And you just check that. You just multiply A dagger on the right. And I, so I multiply A uh, times this expression. And sure enough, I get A A transpose times A A transpose inverse. Um, and that's the identity. So that's it. Okay. And once again, it too reduces to A inverse uh, when A is square. Okay. So uh, by the way, this calculation here uh, expanding a a transpose and writing it as a uh, a a transpose is a minus transpose times a inverse. Um, that would be a terrible crime if a were strictly wide. Um, if a is square, 
and invertible or has you know linearly independent columns this is cool but uh, if it were uh, if a were y strictly wide this would be a terrible crime uh, the the crime there'd be many crimes committed here one is that you can't have a non square matrix you can't have an inverse of it right so that would be in big trouble right there now it turns out that the pseudo uh, inverse we can get it it's very closely related to the uh, to, to the qr factorization let's see how that works um, so let's suppose A has linearly independent columns and we form a QR comp a decomposition. Now, because it has linearly independent columns, Gram-Schmidt, if we use that to calculate QR, is going to succeed. And that means we're going to end up with a matrix Q, the same size as A, it, and it's going to, its columns are going to be orthonormal. And R is upper triangular. It's upper triangular and it's um, with positive entries on the diagonal. Okay, now let's work out what is A transpose A. Well, A is QR, so I just go QR per n transpose qr and now i use the fact that the product the transpose of the product is the transpose is the product of the transposes in reverse order so i get over here uh, here i get r transpose q transpose qr ah but q transpose q is i it's the identity because in fact that that is precisely equivalent to saying the columns of q are orthonormal so that's an identity in the middle it goes away and i end up with r transpose r okay Interesting. Now, let's take A dagger. A dagger is A transpose A quantity inverse, A transpose, but we just worked out A transpose A is R transpose R. And so this is R transpose R inverse QR. Now, A is can be tall, so I certainly cannot expand things and write A inverse. But R is square and invertible. So this thing, I can for sure use the rule that says that R transpose times R quantity inverse is the inverse of R times the inverse of R transpose. And so I get this. Um, oh, and then this is QR quantity transpose. That's the same as the, the product of the transposes in reverse order. And so this is, this is R transpose Q transpose. So I get there. And what happens is in the next formula, I have an R transpose inverse and an R transpose that line up next to each other. They annihil annihilate each other. The product is the identity and that just goes away. And I get R inverse Q transpose. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, so that's, this is a very cool formula. It's just R inverse times Q transpose. That, that's the formula for the pseudo inverse of a, of a tall, uh, matrix, right? A linearly independent columns or tall or square. That's, doesn't matter. Um, okay. Now that means I can actually calculate the pseudo inverse because I could just do this. To do that, I'm going to, I'm going to calculate a dagger times EI. That's going to give me the i column of a dagger. Uh, and to do that, I'll simply write it as R inverse times Q transpose EI. Okay, so now I see what we do. We do a QR factorization. You do a QR factorization on A. Um, then you take the columns of Q transpose, that's these things, and for each of those you do a back substitution. And this will give you uh, the uh, A dagger, right? And, and it will give you uh, it, it'll give you this because you'll compute it column by column. So that's that's how that. Okay, so that um, that is the QR factorization. Um, I, uh, I should say this uh, this finishes a section of the an entire section of the course. Um, we've seen vectors, matrices, uh, the concept of inverses and solving linear equations, and we even know how to do it uh, when, I should say, various matrices have linearly independent columns or are invertible if it's square. Um, so that's where we are so far. So you know some, you, you know some things, and you can do some useful things. Um, I should say that the course is about to get much more useful in the next section, uh, when we talk not about solving equations, uh, but about solving equations approximately. Um, and that's going to be coming up as the next section of the uh, course.